I am one of the founder members of Napalm Death, who went on to develop the grindcore genre. And as a result, they are a group that's being featured in the Home and Metal Project. I'm from Coventry originally. I was born in Coventry. Um, I was in a children's home there. And then I was adopted and moved to Meriden, which is a very small village between Coventry and Birmingham, the centre of England. I began to get interested in music when I was 10. Um, I wasn't really interested in much except for literature before that. And then I met my next door neighbour, Miles Ratledge, and we started to do a fanzine together when I was 11 and he was 12. And then, because we were seeing lots of concerts and meeting bands through the fanzine, we naturally started to write songs ourselves, so we formed the band to express ourselves, really. Uh, that's me, and that's Miles, Rat, and that's with a copy of our fanzine, which was taken for the Birmingham Evening Mail, who wrote a story on our fanzine. So sort of within a year of getting into punk, we discovered a band called Crass, who were an anarchist punk band, and really their critique meant that those larger bands, who were really just rock and roll bands who were dressed in funny clothes, hoping to get record deals, they seem completely bogus when put up against the politics and the attitude and the uh, approach of bands like Crass. So we, 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 and also musically, the underground music was a lot harsher, um, a lot more abrasive, a lot more aggressive, which obviously had an impact on Napalm Death later as we started to develop the grindcore sound. There, there was quite a big recession in Britain at the time and, and the sounds of the city were harsh and cold and, and grey and, and steely and, and very much like granite. And also I think the, uh, the fact that the people involved came from zones either at the edge of the city or right outside of the city meant that there was an element of boredom, there was an element of uh, feeling out of sync and sometimes that alienation gets expressed in harsh ways. But I think there were a lot of people looking for something that was exciting, that they weren't being peddled. And this music wasn't being peddled, it had no coverage in the, the music press. You found out about it, you went to it, and then you would go into a concert room, say, if you hadn't been involved. And there'd be, say, a few hundred people all getting into something that nobody had told them to like. That's quite exciting. It also really ties into the British pop culture aspect of being elitist, which we were very, very good at. There are connections between all of the, the, the initial five groups that are featured in the project, as I'm sure there will be if, when it extends to cover other groups. And I think it's a really valid thing to do to pull it together, but it's also good as a social history project because music scenes, particularly uh, ones that come from the underground rather than through the mainstream channels, which Heavy Rock did initially, and you know, and, and bands like Judas Priest came from from gigging in pubs and meeting people. It's the people that make those scenes develop, those sounds develop in part, as well as the musicians. So when in this project, when people are coming in and bringing their memories, then it feeds back into a continuous cycle. Great. Yeah.